How to cook a traditional fruit chutney. Hello everybody, my name is James Howe and this is Chef at Home. And we continue on today with my how to cook masterclass. So grab your pinnies and let's get on with today's lesson. So fruit chutney. Chutney is a marvellous thing. Chutney started off as a process for people to preserve their crops right the way through the year so they'd never go hungry. Nowadays it's mash produced to live in a jar and land on a cheese board or be, or be smothered on a poppadom. But it's still useful today for you in the home. It's a great way of using up food that's starting to perish. And by learning the techniques involved, it opens a lot of doors for other garnishes such as a such as jams, marmalades and other preserves, which if done right, earn their place on any menu. So we'll start off then. We've got ourselves a pan here. And as I said, we're using up all their ingredients. They're overripe, they're not the prettiest. They're not moldy, but they're not quite ready for the bin just yet. So I'm gonna start off by dicing an onion. Got some sticks of celery that I'm just gonna roughly chop. So these vegetables going in, they help balance the flavours out for what you're going to see in a bit. Now I've got some garlic. Use a couple of bulbs, I don't want it to be the dominant flavour. And again, just a rough chop. A uh, little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. In they go, and that can go onto the heat. Just slowly start sweating out. Then we've got some pears. Really, really easy prep, just whip off the stalk slice in half and then just dice them up you can if you want to you can take the peel off but you don't need to there's a lot of goodness still in that peel so leave it on don't worry too much about how big you're chopping it because it's going to break down during cooking anyway and then you can go into the pan and four or five apples something like that similar process stalks out in half one difference being in half again and then just whip that little pouch of seeds out. The seeds don't really soften during cooking so we need rid of them really. When you think about it, chutney is a fascinating thing. It teaches us a lot about the history of the world, at least from a British standpoint. So the first like known recipe of chutneys was something like 500 BC, something like that. And it was like as the as the Roman Empire started moving more east, moving into what's now India, discovered this recipe. As it's as it made its way across the empire, then it was like a way of measuring wealth. So, however many jars of chutney you had, or however many pots of chutney you had in your cupboards, or in your, in your storeroom or your cellar, I guess, would have shown how rich you were because you, you could eat all year round. Then when the British went over there, we nicked it as well. And by the time it got back to the, got back to London and the British Isles, we'd also got coming from the other direction, chilies from the Americas. So we ended up bunging the two together and created like the first bit of fusion cooking, I suppose. Anyway, enough of the history lesson. Apples diced. They can go into that pan as well. And then next up, whip some grapes off the stalks so the grapes off the vine now we're just going to slice those in half now there's not really a right and wrong fruit you can put in here this is just what i've got that's it the right conditions you can use exactly the same principles if you want to have a go at making some more famous one like a, a mango chutney or a tomato chutney so grapes in from here we need to add the bedrock ingredients so the first is vinegar now depending on what fruit you're using, you're going to need different amounts, so it's, it's all about tasting it. Let's we'll start off with some, let it cook halfway, add some more if you need to. And the second is sugar. Roughly about twice as much sugar as vinegar, just to cut through that sharpness. Now, a little bit of nutmeg and a little bit of cinnamon. If you've got sticks, even better. And just stir that in just a little bit. Just get all those flavors going around. Now I'm gonna pop a lid on it. I'm gonna leave that to simmer for about 45 minutes, but I'm gonna check it every 10 to 15, just to see how it's getting on. Give it a bit of stir, give it a bit of loving. Check the vinegar, check the sugar. 
Just be careful when you taste it because it's going to be hot. I know that sounds really obvious, but it's hot sugar, it is molten. Right, so that's been about 45 minutes. I can already see it's bubbling away. Oh, it's got a lovely, lovely smell. Fruit, the cinnamon, it's, it's almost like a, it's almost Christmassy in smell. But the fruit's breaking down, there's still chunks. You can still see what everything was to begin with. Now for me, I like that because you can tell instantly that is homemade, that's rustic. You put that on someone's plate, they know you've gone to that effort. However, if it just happens that you want them to be smoother, the easiest thing to do is rather than blend it, is to use a, something like a potato masher or maybe even a whisk and just beat out a few of those lumps. Now it might still look a little bit wet, but that's because the sugar's still hot. As it cools, it'll get firmer, more syrupy. So, I'm going to decant this. Avoid, I'm careful of splashes. I'm going to allow this to cool overnight if you can, and just let that set. So, after being overnight in the fridge, we've got this lovely fruity chutney, nice and syrupy. Just the way I like it with big old chunks of fruit, so when you when you do start eating into it, give this lovely explosion of flavour still. And as mentioned, the rules for this, as well as any other chutney, all apply. Use a combination of vinegar and sugar to create this wonderful sweet and sour sort of flavour. But that's it for today's lesson. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.